Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Homi, and I'm here today to start a little series I've been wanting to do for a while. And a little bit of downtime to start the new year just before I get ready to move. So I thought we'd do it right now. Record a few videos, get them up over the coming week, and uh, give you a little idea on how to get better at Football Manager. So this is a little bit of an academy series where I take you through some of the aspects of the game that I feel get overlooked and are vitally important towards building success within the game. Uh, I find a lot of people do things in a certain way that either miss the idea or miss execute the idea so not trying to sound sort of too high horse or heavy handed about it i'm here to teach you what i do and why it works and my goal is to make everybody out there a better football manager player than they are right now so hopefully you will learn something from these videos i've got a set of five very broad topics that I think are the five key things that I do that I don't see very many other people do, especially not all five. Um, now, I do stream on Twitch. I stream Football Manager Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays, 10 a.m. in the U.S. Central Time, which equates to about 4 p.m. in Europe or 5 p.m. in Central Europe, depending whether you're GMT or Central European time. So basically, what um, what I do on there is I just play through, but I also answer questions and I'll evaluate players for you if you send me a screenshot during that in the chat. I will evaluate tactics. I will break down what I'm doing and why. Um, at every step of the way, I get asked a lot of questions. So my idea was, why not basically those you know, why not take those most asked questions, put them in a video, and get that information out to all of you here on YouTube where anybody can access it. And hopefully, as I say, it will help people get more out of their game. Because when things are going well, Football Manager is a phenomenal game. When things go against you, it is one of the most rage-inducing games out there. So my five-step plan that I'm going to walk you through in these series of videos, starting with this one today. First up will be, surprise, surprise, we're on the screen, tactics. I'm going to teach you a little bit about how I think about tactics, how I build a tactic, my ideas and theories within the game and how it all works, uh, what I've seen elsewhere from successful tactics other people have used, um, and I'm trying to go in and see what they've done and why it works and get into the mechanics of it a little bit then a little bit about player roles and duties and all that kind of thing uh player instructions team instructions your mentalities i'm going to dive into each level of tactics and basically tell you why i like playing the way i do and why i feel it gets me success no matter what club what level home away it, it really doesn't matter we we tend to perform to or above expectations and i think that's all you can really ask for so it's not just tactics alone there's a lot of other things that go into making a club good and they each feed into each other and off each other you know very symbiotically so tactics is today that's video one coming up i'll be putting together a little video on training which we'll look at the schedules ideas of training your intensities day to day and also in general uh, the mentoring system, how I set it up and why I think you know, it's an underutilized part of the game. And also, we'll take an in-depth look at the dynamic screen, which is new to 2019 uh, and 2020. It's a very, very useful screen that I absolutely love. So we'll be digging into that in the training video. Coupled with that as well for video three, we're going to dive into morale why morale is important, how it affects things, and how you can get the best grasp on it. Even when you've got a squad in total player revolt, how do you get out of that within two weeks? It might take you longer, it might take you less, but that's my ideas behind that. So we look at the training aspect, how matches affect things, 
your form, uh, conduct, all that kind of thing, where you can take advantage of what the game gives you to rebuild morale or to keep it high. So that'll be video three. Video four, I'm going to focus on your backroom staff, how to get more, where to get them, what to look for, what attributes I kind of look for. Uh, we'll look as well quickly through the staff responsibilities, what I feel I can hand off to the computer and the AI, and what I feel I need to be in control of myself and why, as well as staff personalities and how they kind of affect the whole situation as well. And then in video five, I'll take a look at actually making signings, what I look for in players for, you know, the first team, what I look for in those sort of abilities um, and attributes out there, player moves as well, the potential of a player, when it matters more than others for me, what kind of positions I look at and um, why more than anything else. And also then how to set up your youth team, what a good youth team I think looks like, how to sign players for the first team compared to how I sign players for the youth team, player comparisons and uh Buying to sell, basically making a profit by signing in a ton of youngsters and either loaning them out or selling them in a couple of years' time to try and make some money. So all that will be wrapped up in a signings video. That will be the last in our five sort of uh, topic series. If there's anything else you guys out there and you gals out there can think of, get in touch. Hit me up in the comment section below on Twitter at Chris Ormy. Or if you see me live on Twitch, as I say, Twitch tv forward slash chris Ormy. you can always jump in and ask me there so with that being said let's jump into this tactics video we're going to try and keep these brief this would be a little bit longer probably because it's a big topic i really really see a lot of people ignoring they either just go default tactics or they download someone else's very few people dive in to the tactic system and get a team playing the way they want them to play that's my goal today. So, for this video, we will be looking at my uh, RB Leipzig save, or Leipzig, depending how you want to say it. Uh, I can never remember which way is the correct way. It's the Red Bull team in Germany. It's kind of hated by a lot of traditional football fans, not just in Germany, but around the world, but especially in Germany for this corporation coming in, buying up a section of clubs and basically using them as feeder clubs into each other. So there's a club, in, an academy or a club that used to be in Ghana. There's one in Brazil. Um, they kind of feed into different clubs as well. They kind of feed into the New York Red Bulls in America. And then in Austria, you've got RB Salzburg, Red Bull Salzburg, who sort of collect those players and test them within the European market and the North American market. And then New York kind of feel, feeds back into, um, into Salzburg and Austria as well. And then that gets pushed then into Leipzig, which is the kind of end destination. Now, the reason why I chose this club is because I thought it'd be kind of fun to see if I could piggyback off that a little bit and do some stuff. Prize money in Germany is really high. You got Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund, and then you got some decent clubs around you, but you're up there with them. You're sort of top six club, and it doesn't take much to really start becoming the best club in Germany and from there, the world. So that was the idea. That was why that's the club we're using. We're in season three, just about to kick off season three of our Twitch save. Um, and things are going well. So I want to walk you through the tactic that I've actually got here. So it's a 4-3-1-2. You can see that that's the uh, defenders. We've got four of them. We've got three midfielders. We've got the one attacking midfielder and the two strikers. So that's what the 4-3-1-2. We're not playing with wingers, so it's a narrow formation. Um, and I like playing attacking football. So what I've done is change this a lot in three years 
We started by playing with wingers. I dropped those back in. I was playing with a defensive midfielder. I swapped that out now for an attacking mid. Uh, we did have two attacking mids. One of them's now gone up to make it two up front. There's been a lot of evolutions of this tactic, and you will find that. You will find that your needs, your wishes will change over time. Don't worry. As long as you know the basics of the tactic, tactic system, you will be able to do the changes you want as and when you need to. So for me, in this current iteration, I think this is a really nice tactic. Um, it's condensed in defense. It closes down space really well, and it counterattacks like a dream. If we've got the ball, we're going to flood past you, and you're not going to be able to stop us. When you've got the ball... We're very compact, very defensive, very well set up. So I think that's a key aspect. What your team looks like in attack, what it looks like in defense, and the transitions in between. So we've got our formation. I've picked my roles and duties. We'll have a look at those in a little bit as well. Um, before now, I'm going to load my tactic another couple of times here now the reason i want to do that for this yes yeah I've, I've even changed i've even changed where the ap plays that doesn't really matter too much but i'm going to set it up anyway so the advanced playmaker is right it's a little bit more advanced than the deep lying playmaker so <laughs> that should uh that should really give you an idea of what they do. And these descriptions, by the way, they will tell you quite a lot of what you can do and how it works and why. Okay. But the reason I want to do these three is because I want to talk about attack, defense, and the transitions in between. So you look at this tactic, and it's a nice base tactic, and okay. That's not how it's going to look, though. It's going to look like that at the start of the game, but not when the players are playing. They're not all going to move at the same places and to the same ways, anything like that. So, step one. This is my default tactic, but what does this look like when we are attacking? Well, these wingbacks are on attack duty. With no winger in front of them, they're going to bomb on all the way up the wing. They're just going to sprint up. So they then come up there. This attacking midfielder is probably going to stay in here somewhere. The advanced playmaker is more likely to go up alongside him. Complete forwards will go almost anywhere, so hopefully in between the defenders. The pressing forward may drop back a little bit more. And this deep blame playmaker then. What I'm really hoping is... This guy slides across a little bit. And then that guy will slide across a bit. So in attack, this is kind of what I want us to be looking like. Now, we may not. We may not be this symmetrical, but it doesn't really matter. What we are showing, though, is we've got players outside the box to take long shots and to recycle possession. We've got players here, in case it gets cleared, to go get the ball up wide and try and recycle that back up the wings. We've got players here at the back who can step up for any counter-attacks and do some stuff, and a goalkeeper who's willing to clean up at the back. But balls in from wide, balls in the box are going to be met by my two strikers. Anything outside the area or recycling possession is going to be the midfielders. So you can see, in attack, we're quite attacking. Well, that's fine. But now, how do we look like in defense? Well, these guys will be sitting back. None of these players will change. This is their default defensive setting. It's quite likely, though, that that deep line playmaker on defensive duty is actually going to drop back a little bit. Not only that, but I, I believe that that attacking midfielder is going to drop back into central midfield. you're probably going to see the pressing forward drop back a little bit as well to chase down. 
And this guy's more than likely going to stay around here somewhere and just drift wherever he wants to go. So that's my defense. When we don't have the ball, this is likely how we're going to line up. So any attacking midfielders, I've got this deep playing playmaker sitting on them. Their strikers, one or two or however many they've got, I've got central defenders to occupy the space. For their wing play, I got my wing backs back. That's going to be fine. They're going to sit and wait to break, but they're going to try and guard against crosses as well and make sure that they don't give away too much room or too many balls into the box easily. They're going to make the opposition work for it. Now, let's say that they're playing with wing backs as well as wingers and they're trying to overload. What will normally happen is this guy will step up to get the ball off the wing back or the full back who's pushing up and then a nice simple ball into space where the wingers are unmarked this guy will try and move across there might be a strike maybe two strikers or an attacking midfielder will run in from deep and this deep line playmaker won't pick them up there'll be a player at the far post occupying this defender you'll get a lot of space for their players to score so one thing I really want to try and do is make sure that these guys are also picking up the opposition fullbacks or wingbacks. So even though it's not what they're there for and a, a Carolero role would be much better with it, you can pause to read that and figure out why, but it goes side to side instead of up and down. Um, I'm not going to play with those, but I'm going to set them up with their instructions to mark the fullbacks. But in defense, I think if we do that, we're marking the wings, we're secure. We've got a player outside the box. We've got two players chasing down in the midfield area. One guy on the edge of the area just to make sure that nothing's going to come up, you know, onto the edge of the area and, and just, you know, give someone an easy shot. They can also drop back into that midfield to help a little bit more. These guys occupy the space. This guy's up here waiting for a counter-attack. Maybe this guy can turn his man, or maybe he picks up the ball on a counter. Maybe he drops back a little bit, gets the ball, and as he continues to run back into the box, it's a 1-2, and then we can counter quickly. Or if we counter down the wings, we know we move up, and this is our transition. From that defense, back into this attack, that quickly that easily we know how we're going to look and if we transition from here to defense these guys are going to have to do a lot of running to cover for them marking people these guys might end up here or here i'm not really sure he's going to drop back he's probably going to drop back more to the wing um he might drop back and he'll drop back so it's all about transitions now in those transitions i didn't see any real holes the only real hole since now this looks more or less like our attack tactic and this looks like a possible way that we'll be defending there's holes here that's fine like he, he can come back here he can drop back into here. He can even drop back there. If we're under sustained pressure, we can do that. And we still got players available then to counterattack. But in those transitions, the only big difference between the two, if I can click properly, is here. Long ball counters down the wing. That's the only real problem we'll have in this tactic. But I know this is an issue, and I think I've I've kind of got it set up to where it won't be that much of an issue. Um, and I know these guys are going to drop back as quickly as they can, and he's going to chase any support from fullback. He's going to step out for the fullback. He's going to drop in maybe as far as into the box itself if there's a runner from midfield. So even if these guys aren't back here and an early ball comes in the box, I might have two to three defenders back. So that's your transition. 
between attack and defense, between defense and attack. Are there areas you are not taking advantage of on the attack? How can you fill those areas? Are there gaps at the back? If you're going to get counterattacked, if you pushed everybody forward and you're in full attack mode, where are you going to get hit? Do you have it covered? If not, can you cover it? And then you go back to the other side. After you've made a defensive change, you look at your attack again and say, okay, now the way that they're in their new defensive position, where do they go and how do they go? And Now, player instructions will play a part in that. And you can set up all kinds of things. You can tell them to mark players. You can tell them to mark positions. Um, you can tell them to hold or to roam or to run with the ball or just try and pass and get rid of it. Long balls, short balls. Like, there's so much here that you can take advantage of. So many different instructions. So I can tell this player to stay out wide run out wide when he gets the ball anyway, and dribble whenever he wants to. If I don't want to be man-marked with that striker, I can tell him to roam with the ball. But I've got an idea how this tactics works in defense, and I like it. I've got an idea how it should work in attack, and I like it. I don't think the transitions are bad. I think they're going to cause me a couple of issues, but you're never going to be able to guard against everything. So, I like the balance. I like the balance of the tactic. That being said, we're a very attacking team. And I think there aren't that many teams out there that are going to score three or four goals against us again. But we're more than capable of putting three or four past most teams. I think against the best teams in the world, I should be competitive. Maybe not able to beat them just yet, but I'm Fairly compared to, I can give them a game. I know this. At home, I, I can sneak a win. Away, I can get a draw, maybe. So I'm looking to attack. And it's only in some of those away games will I actually drop down to defensive. In some of those games, I think I'm going to be counterattacked a little bit more. I'm actually going to sit on positive and try and control a more possession-based game. Um... I may tend to play defensive and then throw the ball up front. Why? Because I've got strikers, I believe, will go get that ball for me. And if they can go get the ball and we're sitting deeper, we're playing defensive, and instead of my much higher defensive line, if I drop these lines back, probably, say, there, their defense might move up and their team might move up and that then opens up a little bit of space in behind them. Even if they're trying to defend and trying to steal a draw, then that long ball forward is going to beat them. So there are situational things that you do have to take into consideration for each game. But I like this for possession. That's possession. That is to get people running off the ball. So they'll pass the ball into space. Get the ball to the fullbacks. Why? Because these fullbacks are going to be pushing on. They are going to be pushing. So quite often, they're going to be in between the opposition's wingers and fullbacks. They're going to be in space. It's an easy way to get them possession. And then as somebody comes towards them, whether it's back to the goalie, to a centre-back, to a midfielder, the attack midfielder or a striker, somebody's going to be left open. And that's where their pass should go. Doesn't always work out that way, but these are the ideas of how each section works. Now, I could just say di distribute the flanks, but they might try and boot it up to the striker who's pulling out wide. I don't want that. I don't want that because he might pull the centre-back with him and if he's not great in the air, you might lose the ball to that centre-back. But even if you win that header, you're running into the territory of where their full-back will be, or their goalkeeper, depending. And, like, you're giving them a chance to win the ball. You're heading it on, 
you've then got to you know to land or to turn and go after it whereas they can just go after it so distributing the fullbacks is a much easier way of saying okay i know they'll be free most of the time easy way to get possession out from the back out of the danger and as they come to me i can pick them apart with the passes they give me i love counter-attacking i think i've got a quick team i've got a fit team this is where we're good if we can get the ball to the strikers we can score goals so on any attack by the opposition my fullbacks will fly up the field we're trying to win back the ball as much as possible keep the back line in there but as soon as we get it those fullbacks are bombing on everybody else is pushing up we cycle the ball as quick as we can either to those fullbacks or to the strikers and we get the ball in the danger zone out of possession it's just about trying to get the ball back high pressure high intensity high line offside trap very narrow we don't want them to um to really open up holes in between our defenders between our fullbacks and our center backs so i'm sitting defensive narrowly so that they can go outside if they want to and they can beat me outside but then they're probably going to cross or pass it back in the midfield but if they get into the channels in between defenders and strikers sorry defender uh, fullbacks and center backs that striker might get a one-on-one -on -one with a goalie and you might concede so i i'm really trying to limit where they can attack i'm going to give them space so that they go places that i think i can defend we're gonna we're gonna mark tightly because we're gonna we're gonna pass into space so we're gonna shut them down and make sure they're not getting time on the ball and then we're gonna pass that ball in space and gamble that we can win it before they can because my players are fast and you know they're used to doing that kind of thing so i think we'll win the ball we're gonna press really intensely because that's what the higher lines are all about so we're gonna add that in and really double down that we're gonna win the ball if we don't and if they can counter down the flanks and if they can get a runner through the middle to meet the cross or you know a diagonal through ball and they split the defense they beat the offside right these are the ways we can concede but again it's only one or two ways they will really be able to consistently damage us and if they do i'm dropping my lines back and i'm going more long ball and i'm not trying to play full throttle uh, and we're also getting stuck in which i don't like getting stuck in i don't like staying on feet but it really does complement everything else we're doing it does mean we get a lot of yellow cards not that many red cards but a lot of yellow cards but i've got a deep squad i've got two players i think i can challenge for the league with at every position i've got a great first 11 and i think if i played my second 11 every game i'm a top three club so i'm not going to worry too much about players getting banned because i do try and train them pretty heavily we don't get too many injuries so you know they're playing a lot of game time they're gonna need rest and i do give them rest throughout the season but those bookings and those bands that add up they also help to rest those players a little bit counterintuitive but it works and i'm okay with that and we've also got the cord as well which uh we've put together that's in dynamics we can quickly look at the code of conduct this is the one i use it's pretty hefty um but the players seem to like it so a week for missed training the first two times then two weeks after that um exactly the same for going here well missing training not showing up for any team activity it's exactly the same offense for me getting sent off with two bookings or a red card same offense for me one week's for the first three times it happens two weeks fines for every subsequent offense and then a multiple booking ban which we we're just talking about the amount of yellow cards when we got like five or six you miss a game half a week the first time half a week the second time week the third two weeks the fourth or onwards the players like it they basically 
save me some money throughout the season um, with some of these. And yeah, the fact that they accept the punishment because you set it up as a code of conduct means that that actually improves their morale because they know what's coming and they don't argue it as much as if you just arbitrarily find them for getting a red card. So I think this works really well um, and it ties into that idea of being allowed to really go after the opposition. Now, that being said, this will give you some injuries. Not big injuries, maybe, but they will give some injuries. The intensity will tie your players out. You've got to be resting your players after every game. Um, and training will help with that. But I do have a rule of basically selecting all my players that played in that game, or I sought by basically the condition, and let's say I let's say I just played a game. I'd probably only do those three, but I could do everybody under a hundred percent if I've got a few days, and some players are really tired. So I got three days to my next game. You can see the next games today. But after this, I think I'm free for a little while. Yeah, seven days. So at most of those seven days, I, I might rest people two days. If it was only three days, I'd rest for one. But then I would just select those players that are tired, training, right quick, training, rest, and give them a day off. So I'm mitigating the fact of a high intensity. I'm not worried about the bookings that are going to come. It's going to win me the ball back. It's going to win me the ball back higher up the field because we're playing higher up the field. If they do have a good attack and it comes back to the goalie or something, we've got a way to get out of it with that fullback distribution to midfield and we can absolutely kill them up front. But we're not trying too hard. We're willing to recycle, but if we can get that ball one-on-one -on -one with a striker on a defender, we're going to do it and trust our strikers. If not, we're going to set up for possession around the box. Those wing-backs in position to deliver balls into the box. And we're just going to know that our pressure is probably going to tell. And if not, their counter-attack isn't going to be as deadly. So we know what we look like in attack. We know how we defend. We are okay with the transitions. We like the way our team is set up to play. And we know that we're filtering their attacks into certain areas of the field that we don't think are too dangerous. Uh, we're taking away the highly dangerous stuff and leaving them stuff they've got to be good to take advantage of. So there's all of that in there in a basic tactic. It's a lot to think about. It's a lot to think about, but when you do it, it's got great success. Great success. Um, the other thing is to make sure you've got your players set up in the right roles. So again, make sure your players can play them, but also go through each one of these and see what you like. Set up your instructions. You'll see here for my complete forward. I'm marking and tackling pretty hard up front. We don't gain too many bookings, but we're just really trying to put pressure on their back line as much as possible. The complete forward will hold up the ball a little bit, let the other teammates get in there. If he's one-on-one, -on -one, he's probably going to run on his own. I'm okay with that. But yeah, it's, it's as, as basic as I can be really in an attack role. Here, though, you can see a pressing forward. Get further forward. Um, I've got him up to shoot less often. I'm experimenting with that. Uh, but Rome from position, so he's more of a setup man for my main striker. I do have a new striker, no spoilers here, but I have a new striker that I think will score tons of goals. So that may change. Um, and again, you see here, cross more often from the byline, so try and get forward to cross. Dribble more, run wide with the ball, get further forward. We're really making our wing backs into our wingers. So winger, wingerless formation but the wingbacks play that role. As part of this, I would go into training and into the units 
and you can see a little bit here. I've got everybody set up to play their way. So they're all playing these roles and duties that we've set up. Um, now, the good thing about that is they're training those positions. They're going to know how to do things. They're going to be in you know the best possible situation when they play. Um, yeah, I really, really think you should go in there and handle those sets of trainings yourself. We will look at that in the training video as well. But that's tactics. That's tactics. I've got some experimental tactics that I've downloaded from other people and some that I've made myself just to see how they work and why they work. Uh, I really want to play with Volantes again. Segundo Volante is a phenomenal, phenomenal tactic. Um, the Volantes. But yeah, I got my own versions of it. And then I got old tactics from my own saves that have got all kind of different stuff. Uh, then I got one from my friend Scooter and one from my friend uh, Smokey, who I'm testing out their tactics to see how well they do with this team. Or I was last season. And I've got an old version of the tactic and the new version of the tactic that I'm using. So last season... So the first half of last season, the second half of last season, what we're carrying over into this year. So I have what it takes to make this tactic work because I've got the idea. At every sense, it makes, you know, every step, sorry, it makes sense. We've got the players training those positions. We've got the roles and duties set up in a way that makes sense. We've got our opposition instructions as well. If we look at those very quickly, set up to tightly mark any wide players or strikers, to press any um, wingers, attacking midfielders or strikers, to go in hard on any uh, strikers, attacking mids, wingers or fullbacks or any wide players basically or any goal threats. And show absolutely everybody onto their weaker foot. Very genetic, generic setup, but I think it works really, really good. So it's about a seven-minute intro onto the series, a little breakdown of what each things will be, and about thirty minutes of tactics there, where I think I've given you something to at least think about. At this stage, maybe not ready to dive into this level, but the reason I'm playing wingerless is because I've had a few wingers play badly. I did try this before, and it didn't work um, with a wingerless formation, a very narrow formation. So I've tried it again to prove to myself that it can work. And because I've set it up in such a way that we've got false wingers, it really does work quite well. So it also means as well, buying players is really simple. I'm looking for goalkeepers, left backs, right backs, centre backs, centre mids, and attacking mids, and strikers. I'm not looking for right or left wingers. I'm not now looking for defensive midfielders. I'm not looking for left or right midfielders. I've got a handful of positions to make up here. And if you look at my actual squad here, you can see, and this is my first team, this is my youth team. Um, but I've got goalkeepers. Then I've got some right backs. I've got a ton of centre backs and some left backs. Then I've got a ton of midfielders who can play in a variety of positions. But I can sign five centre mids and know that I'll play most of them in a rotation. If you're playing a two man midfield, you can't do that. If you're playing with wingers, you're probably going to have two wingers that play every game for you, a couple of backups, maybe some youngsters. But for two spots, you're probably going to have to have four players, two starters, two backups. For these three, I can get away with five players. It's an extra position and only one extra player in the squad. And if I got attacking midfielders that can play centre midfield, no, I can even reduce that to a smaller squad. So people aren't being left out, they're not getting unhappy, they can cover for each other. You've got very versatile players that can play different positions. 
Um, it just works really quickly and easily. Means you don't have to scout those wingers or wide players. I think that works really, really well for me. So yeah, I would implore people to uh, take a look at that. But any questions, hit me up in the comment section below. Anything that you want sort of uh, explained further. Anything you disagree with that you think I haven't thought of or overlooked. Um, you know, jump in and let me know on that as well. But until next time, this is step one in our academy process here with uh, Rasenball Sport Leipzig or RB Leipzig, Red Bull Leipzig. Um, yeah. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you come back for more. Next one up's training. I think that's quite important as well. And then a look, as I say, onto the morale system, um, your staff hirings, and then your players as well. Who to buy and why, and who not to buy and why. Some big names in that second category, so... We'll get there, but I think setting up your tactics should be pretty much the first thing you do because it dictates nearly everything else. So, hey, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. As I say, any questions, comments, suggestions, comment section below, at Chris Ormi on Twitter. I'll see you next time. Till then, take care of yourselves.